What if Obi-Wan Kenobi not only truly listened to Dooku on Geonosis, but actually joined him when Dooku informed Kenobi that a Sith Lord was in control of the Republic? How would it have changed things? How would the galaxy fare in that? Well, we're going to go over that, and it's going to be a fun one. I really enjoyed writing this. It might go longer, I guess I'm not entirely sure, but sit back, relax, I hope you enjoy today's fan fiction. Of course, please do subscribe, about 20% of people that watch this are subscribed, 80% of you are not, so please help me out. Thank you, it means so much, best way to support. Alright, enough of that, let's get into today's fan fiction. What if Obi-Wan Kenobi joined Count Dooku on Geonosis? Count Dooku and Darth Sidious talked over a hologram about the events playing out on Geonosis. Dooku and the Separatists had Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi in their possession. He was captured after tracking down bounty hunter Jango Fett. Sidious reveals to Dooku that things are playing out as foreseen, and soon Anakin Skywalker and Padme Amidala will arrive together as well. And once all of them are captured, a trial for execution can begin and war will be waged. Then Sidious tells Dooku to tell Obi-Wan everything, to reveal that the Republic is under control of a Sith Lord. Sidious knows Kenobi and the Jedi are too arrogant to believe this, and this will only spiral them into confusion. And if somehow Kenobi agrees to join, then he will die, and the Jedi will understand how serious this war is. Dooku agrees to everything, and the last thing he sees before ending the conversation is the menacing smile that Sidious wears when things are unfolding in the best way possible. Dooku made his way to the room that Kenobi was being held in and began telling Obi-Wan everything. But while Dooku was loyal to Sidious, he knew that the Sith were treacherous. Someday, Sidious may try to replace him, so Dooku sometimes considered how possible it was to kill Sidious first. Maybe, if he could get Obi-Wan on his side. So Dooku told Obi-Wan that the Republic was under the control of the Sith Lord Darth Sidious, and he tells Obi-Wan he wishes Qui-Gon were still alive to help him, and Obi-Wan says Qui-Gon would never join Dooku. But then Dooku reveals something insane. He tells Obi-Wan that before his death, the two of them worked to transfer their spirit to the netherworld of the Force, and it actually worked for Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon could still talk even after death, and Dooku said that he'd spoken with Qui-Gon's spirit, and in time, Obi-Wan could too, if he joined Dooku. Dooku told Obi-Wan that Qui-Gon thought his master and his apprentice, Dooku and Obi-Wan, must work together to repair the corruption in the galaxy. Obi-Wan was much conflicted this time, and simply stayed silent as Dooku said together they could destroy the Sith. And eventually, Dooku left with Obi-Wan deep in thought. He promised he would train Anakin, but Anakin was now ready to be a Jedi Knight. His training was about over. Perhaps it was time Obi-Wan fulfill a new wish from Qui-Gon. If he was alive in the Netherworld, he would know if there was truly corruption in the Senate. And from there, Events played out the same way we saw in Attack of the Clones. Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Padme were up for execution, and they were able to escape when the Jedi and clones arrived. The battle took place, and eventually Anakin and Obi-Wan chased Dooku through Geonosis. Once in the hangar, the conflict in Obi-Wan was at an all-time high. A true war had broken out, and he wasn't sure which side to take. As Obi-Wan struggled with this, Anakin charged Dooku and was thrown aside with a blast of lightning. As Anakin writhed in pain, Dooku again told Obi-Wan the right path is with him. In order to make the Republic good for the galaxy, it must be rebuilt. Anakin didn't quite know what was happening, but when he was ready, he jumped back in to face Dooku and yelled at Obi-Wan to help him. Obi-Wan stood and watched as the two fought each other. Then, he watched as Dooku cut off the arm of Anakin, swinging for his head. But as he did so, Obi-Wan pulled Anakin against the wall, holding him there. And Obi-Wan said he would go with Dooku and hear him out, so long as Anakin lives. Dooku agreed and the two of them quickly took off in Dooku's ship 
as Yoda arrived to see a broken, angry, confused Anakin cursing Obi-Wan for going with Dooku. Yoda was already greatly displeased by this, wondering how the ever-loyal Kenobi could have been coaxed to join the fallen Jedi Dooku. And as Dooku and Kenobi flew to Coruscant to meet Sidious, Dooku told Kenobi all about the corruption, how Chancellor Palpatine was a Sith Lord, and how many influential senators were paid off to let their world suffer to weaken the Republic. Dooku had seen it firsthand when he was a Jedi, and was now experiencing the full effect of it as a Sith. Obi-Wan couldn't believe it, but he now knew he made the right choice. The Chancellor was the worst enemy of the Republic, and the leader of it. And so many of the Senators were too far gone to ever truly care for their worlds. And Obi-Wan knew the Jedi were too far gone to do what was necessary. Dooku was always one step ahead, just like Qui-Gon. And now Obi-Wan would follow in their footsteps to build a new, better government with Dooku. As they landed inside the secret hangar bay in the works on Coruscant, Dooku told Obi-Wan to be prepared. He had a plan, but this could get unpleasant for Obi-Wan. And the two of them departed the ship as a hooded man began walking towards them. Obi-Wan felt the darkness around him, around this place. This was truly the Dark Lord of the Sith. Obi-Wan saw his face and knew it to be Palpatine. But just a moment later, an excruciating blast of lightning threw Obi-Wan to the ground. As Obi-Wan writhed in pain at the continued electricity, Sidious continued to increase the power, laughing with evil. His plans were coming true. The Clone Wars were beginning. The Republic, the Jedi would crumble, and with the loss of Obi-Wan, Anakin would begin his inevitable descent to the dark side. Sidious let him feel his plans coming into fruition, and the feeling was great. He poured all of his focus, all of his power, into destroying Kenobi. And there was his fatal mistake. He focused everything that he had on Anakin and Obi-Wan, that he momentarily forgot about the man to his side. Treachery was the way of the Sith. And Dooku knew this. Once Sidious was fully focused on Kenobi, Dooku ignited his blade through the heart of Sidious. Apprentice kills Master, the way of the Sith. The lightning stopped and Sidious fell to his knees. In his final moments, he felt anger and a bit of pride for Dooku, doing what Sidious would have done eventually to him. Dooku took the saber out of Sidious's back, and the Dark Lord of the Sith was dead. Kenobi rose to his feet, slowly because of the burns to his skin, but he now knew that he was right to put his faith in Dooku. He had so much to learn, so much they could accomplish together, and so he kneeled in front of Dooku, the master of his master. With the Republic reeling with the sudden disappearance of Chancellor Palpatine, the initial months of the Clone Wars belonged only to the Separatists. The Jedi Order was in disarray, as two of their own were leading the charge for the Separatists. The Republic was in chaos, and they were losing. Senator Bail Organa was eventually elected as the new Chancellor, and thrown into the position in the midst of a galactic war. He was not ready for this, and for the Jedi, they were spread thin, losing members fast more every single day. But Anakin Skywalker was at the center of it all, and he embraced this becoming the figurehead of the Republic. He was angry at his master for leaving, but with the guidance of his wife, the stabilizing presence of new Padawan Ahsoka, as well as the understanding of the Council, Anakin was leading the charge for the Republic. He wanted to find his old master, bring him back, or end him. And as the Clone Wars began, the Separatists were clearly winning. Obi-Wan was training with Dooku to embrace the dark side, but not at the expense of the light completely. Something Dooku had tried to do, but something Sidious had vehemently disagreed with. Dooku said this was the only way to communicate with Qui-Gon, and Obi-Wan had no reason to think he was lying. And so they trained, Obi-Wan embracing the darkness and letting the power in, and the power, the darkness blinding him to who he was just months ago. He knew that the dark side was dangerous, but still 
It was consuming him, and he was becoming a dark side warrior for the Separatists, enjoying this power. And as Obi-Wan went to lead the charge, Dooku furthered the Republic from peace by bringing forth evidence of Palpatine working with the Separatists. This revelation had the Republic questioning who could actually be trusted, and even the Jedi were not as trusted as before. Everyone was under investigation. Everyone was thought to be a traitor. The Separatists had every advantage. And in battle, Kenobi began using his blue saber along with Sidious's red one, dual wielding blue and red. And one day, months into the war, the Republic was on Teth in a battle where the 501st was taking on the Separatists. Obi-Wan Kenobi was dispatched to aid the Separatists here. And upon arrival, he saw Republic forces climbing a wall to reach the Separatist base. Kenobi stepped into action. With the wall being scaled, Kenobi stood atop it, slamming his hand into the ground. The wall quaked and cracked and broke underneath him. Republic forces began falling to their deaths. Kenobi had stopped the invasion and given time for reinforcements to arrive. As he looked over the wall, he actually saw Anakin. Anakin held his ground on the wall as the troopers and tanks that were climbing began to fall beneath him. Anakin didn't budge, thinking he could still make it up, but instead now he stared at Obi-Wan with a mix of sadness, confusion, anger, and the wall continued to crumble. Anakin knew it was over, eventually backflipping down to the ground to try and help any remaining troopers. Obi-Wan knew their eventual meeting would happen someday but not today. Back on Coruscant, Yoda meditated in the temple meditation room. The war was going horribly. Jedi were dying every day, sometimes hundreds in a day, and Yoda was just asking the Force for guidance. The Jedi loyalty to the Republic was causing destruction, and as Yoda meditated, he heard the voice of Qui-Gon Jinn. This was the first time Qui-Gon had ever communicated with anyone from the netherworld of the Force and he began to explain what exactly had gone wrong for Obi-Wan. Qui-Gon told Yoda that Dooku had convinced Obi-Wan to join him by saying it was what Qui-Gon wanted. But that was not true. Qui-Gon had never spoken to Dooku and was not trained well enough to visit anyone using the dark side. Obi-Wan had joined Dooku based on a lie. Obi-Wan thought he was carrying out the wishes of his master, but in reality, he had been manipulated by Dooku and was being consumed by the dark side. Eventually, Yoda was able to contact Anakin and tell him this. Anakin had become an excellent leader and Jedi in the time since Obi-Wan had gone to Dooku. The Council had recognized in that moment just how close Anakin could be following Obi-Wan and had fully embraced him as the Chosen One of the Order. Anakin thanked Yoda and thought he could still save Obi-Wan. Meanwhile, Dooku and Obi-Wan were continuing their training in the works as Dooku praised Kenobi for his work on Teth. Then, Dooku unveiled the next step in their crucial plan. The Republic was losing numbers fast, and they were spread thin across the galaxy. Now was the time for a double assault on the two most crucial worlds of the Republic, Coruscant and Kamino. Dooku and Grievous would go to Coruscant to create a distraction while Kenobi and Ventress go to Kamino secretly. Kenobi was to find the cloning template for the clones and steal it. The clones must cease to exist, and the planet was too heavily guarded for an all-out assault to take place. This would need to be a discreet mission, while the Separatists attack Coruscant, putting all the Republic focus there. The plan was set in motion, and a large Separatist fleet took off to Coruscant, while Kenobi and Ventress took off for Kamino. Anakin and his Padawan Ahsoka stood inside the cloning facilities on Kamino while they were hailed by Master Yoda. Yoda told them horrible news. The Separatists were attacking Coruscant and their presence was acquired there immediately. Above Coruscant, countless of Separatist and Republic ships were battling in an all-out war. The Republic was depleted, but not here on Coruscant. This was their home world, and Jedi fighters took to the skies with their clone squad to do whatever was necessary to win this battle. On Kamino, Anakin and Ahsoka began sprinting to their ships, and right as Anakin was about to take off for Coruscant, 
he felt a presence in the Force. A presence he hadn't felt since... Kenobi. Anakin thought he was him, and he jumped from his ship. Ahsoka followed, and the two of them ran back into the cloning centers, Anakin using the Force to feel for his old master. Obi-Wan and Ventress snuck through the cloning facilities, making their way to the room containing the template of Jango Fett. They would have to secretly kill clones with the Force, leaving a trail of bodies that would set off alarms once discovered. The two of them finally ran into the room and began searching for the template. Right upon locating it, Obi-Wan felt someone behind him, and he heard the familiar lightsaber ignition of Anakin Skywalker. Next to him, his Padawan, wielding two green sabers. Ventress and Obi-Wan both turned and ignited their two sabers, telling the Jedi to leave now. Anakin didn't say a word, but a tear rolled down his cheek as he clenched his fist and leapt for Obi-Wan. Ahsoka took off for Ventress, and the two battles began. Anakin slashed at Obi-Wan, eyes full of sorrow, but knowing this is what had to be done. Obi-Wan felt the power inside of Anakin, felt the small spot of darkness that always lingered inside his former Padawan, and wished Anakin would understand the power he held. The two fought now so perfectly with each other, slashing at the walls, pushing objects at each other to try and disrupt the other fighter, but they were so evenly matched, and eventually the battle was taken outside. The rain of Kamino fell in heavy sheets, drenching the platform of Kamino as Anakin faced his former mentor. The air crackled with tension, the storm reflecting the turmoil within their hearts. Anakin's eyes blazed with the blue fire of a true Jedi, while Obi-Wan's once calm gaze was smoldering with the sinister power of the dark side. Obi-Wan, this isn't you, Anakin shouted above the thunderous downpour his voice laced with desperate disbelief. The battle had paused as the two warriors stared at each other. You were supposed to guide me in the light, Obi-Wan, but Dooku has turned you into his dark side machine. And a twisted darkness overcame Obi-Wan's face as he held up his red and blue sabers, their ominous glow contrasting with the storm's gray backdrop. The Jedi are weak, Anakin, he hissed, his voice dripping with venom. The Jedi code holds them back, the loyalty to the corrupt Republic destroying them, but the dark side offers true power. Join me, Anakin, and together we will rule the galaxy. Anakin's heart clenched, his emotions battling against the training he had received. The bond between them, once so strong, now frayed and strained. His blue blade leapt to life again, humming with righteous fury. I will never turn my back on everything I fought for, he declared his voice quivering with raw determination. And with a surge of the force, the two warriors clashed again amidst the rain-soaked battlefield, their lightsabers dancing and weaving across each other, each stroke resonating with the weight of their bond. Sparks flew as the blades met, illuminating their strained expressions, and Anakin's movements were fueled by his newly found, unwavering belief in the Jedi. He struck with precise speed, his blade a flurry of blue streaks aimed at Obi-Wan. But his former master had become a formidable adversary, countering each attack with calculated brutality. Obi-Wan's movements exuded a twisted elegance, a dance of the dark side that threatened to consume the very essence of Anakin. The sound of clashing lightsabers reverberated through the storm, blending with the thunder as if nature itself mourned their broken brotherhood. Rain-soaked robes whipped around them, mirroring the swirling chaos within their souls. Obi-Wan's red blade slashed downward, narrowly missing Anakin's shoulder, and Anakin retaliated with a powerful thrust, hoping to penetrate Obi-Wan's defenses, but the Dark Jedi parried with an uncanny grace. Their eyes locked for a brief moment, once filled with trust and camaraderie, now clouded with bitterness and anger. The two of them now on a ledge with nothing but angry water far below them. They balanced on a ledge, striking at each other while trying not to fall to their certain death. In that instant, Anakin knew he had to make a choice. The darkness tugged at him, whispering promises of control and dominance. But deep within his heart, he clung to the memories of his love for Padme, his belief in justice, and the ideals of the Jedi Order that he would someday change for the better. 
he channeled his inner turmoil into his movements, infusing his strikes with an unwavering resolve. And with a burst of energy, Anakin surged forward, lightsaber driving towards Obi-Wan's chest. The Dark Jedi barely managed to deflect the flow, but the force behind Anakin's strike sent Obi-Wan stumbling backwards. Obi-Wan regained his footing, eyes blazing with rage. You fool, he spat, his voice laced with a mix of anger and disappointment. You will never understand the power of the dark side. Anakin took a step forward, his own voice filled with sorrow. I may not understand its power, Obi-Wan, but I understand the cost. His voice tinged with regret, and I refuse to lose myself in the process. And Anakin flipped over Obi-Wan, the battle ensuing again. Still above Coruscant, Dooku ordered a full retreat. Ventress had informed him that Anakin and Ahsoka had engaged her and Kenobi. Ventress had momentarily gotten away to call Dooku, and in this time, Dooku had received an update on the battle station prototype that he was building. This was the perfect opportunity to strike the Republic in a way they would never recover from. The prototype of his new superweapon was ready, and he would now use it on Kamino. The cloning template would unfortunately be destroyed forever, but so would Skywalker and the cloning facilities, the biggest thorns in his side, and all he had to sacrifice was Kenobi. So Dooku took off, preparing his prototype superweapon to be ready for Kamino. With a new surge of determination, Anakin and Obi-Wan propelled themselves apart, their sabers tracing arcs of light through the rain-soaked air. They leapt from platform to platform, their battle taking them to higher levels of the Kaminoan structures. Each landing was accompanied by a resounding clash of blades, the echoes resonating through the skies, Anakin's movements fueled by raw emotion, his strikes a testament to his new abilities. And as the battle raged on, Anakin felt the weight of his past choices bearing down on him. Memories of his friendship with Obi-Wan, their shared victories and losses, surged to the forefront of his mind. It tore at his heart, threatening to unravel him now, all of a sudden, and the platforms beneath their feet trembled as the force clashed between them. Each step they took was laden with the weight of their destinies. Obi-Wan's eyes burned with hunger for power. He couldn't realize it, but the dark side was completely overtaking him now. His movements, ag increasingly aggressive and unyielding. Anakin's own mind raced, searching for a way to reach him, the man who had once been his mentor. He called upon the Jedi, his wisdom inside of him, tapped into the Force, embracing its flow. And then he recalled his conversation with Yoda. With a surge of agility, Anakin exuded a series of acrobatic maneuvers, flipping, twirling through the air. His lightsaber darted in rapid succession, forcing Obi-Wan to retreat for a moment. The fallen Jedi stumbled backwards, his face contorted with a mixture of surprise and rage. And Anakin seized this opportunity, his voice filled with determination. Obi-Wan, Dooku has been lying to you, he pleaded, his words carried on the wind. Qui-Gon spoke to Master Yoda, not Dooku. You've been manipulated this entire time. But Obi-Wan's response was only a dark chuckle, filled with defiance. Dooku warned me of your lies, he sneered, and Anakin's heart sank, realizing that his former mentor may truly be lost to him. The rain intensified, as if weeping for the shattered bond, and with a heavy heart, he renewed his assault, pouring every ounce of his being into his strikes. The battle continued, lightsabers clashing in light and shadows, lightning crackled overhead, its electric energy mirroring the intensity of their clash. Obi-Wan's attacks grew increasingly desperate as Anakin's resolve solidified. With each blow he deflected, each counter-strike he delivered, the fallen Jedi's facade of control began to crack. His movements grew wild and erratic, his red saber slashing with unfocused rage, and Anakin seized this opportunity his voice cutting through the storm. This ends now, Obi-Wan, he declared, his tone carrying a mix of sadness and determination. I will not let the darkness kill you. I will save you from yourself. And with a mighty swing, Anakin directed the full force of his power into a single strike. The Dark Jedi's defenses crumbled, unable to withstand this strength. His red blade shattered into fragments, its energy dispersing into the rain-soaked air. Obi-Wan stumbled backwards, eyes wide with disbelief 
and defeat. Anakin stood before him, his lightsaber raised, but his voice softened with genuine sorrow. I'm sorry, Obi-Wan, he whispered, and Anakin went for a final strike, but he was forced to turn around suddenly as Obi-Wan's face filled with horror looking at something behind them. A large space station had suddenly appeared above Kamino, and Obi-Wan knew what this was. Dooku had grand plans for a Death Star, and this was a prototype of the battle station. It was about a fifth of the Death Star's size, but had destructive capabilities. Obi-Wan saw it begin to power up, and knew Anakin was right. Dooku was betraying him. With a new burst of energy, Obi-Wan leapt to his feet, grabbed his only remaining blue lightsaber, and yelled at Anakin to follow him. As quickly as possible, the two sprinted into a fortified small building on the lower levels of the city, and maybe a second after the door behind them closed, a beam of one powerful blast was heard, and the entire city began to shake and explode. This station didn't have anything close to the power of the future Death Star, but if placed right, it could completely shatter a city. Thousands of clones were killed as the city tumbled into the water. Facilities of all sorts gone into the water in an instant. Obi-Wan and Anakin felt their small building dislodge and fall to the water. With a hard thud, the two were knocked unconscious momentarily. And when they both woke up, red emergency lights filled the small structure and it was clear they were underwater. Obi-Wan sat in disbelief and Anakin came and sat next to him. Obi-Wan had snapped out of the dark side, dark side trance he'd seemed to be in during their battle, realizing now that he was simply a pawn in Dooku's grand plan to take over the galaxy. He expressed his apologies to Anakin, though their bond would never be corrected. Anakin said they weren't dead yet, and perhaps there was a way to win this day. Obi-Wan said he would do whatever it takes, and the two of them formulated a plan to get up to this space station. Obi-Wan had a special connection with the Awas, the birds on Kamino that traveled both in the air and the sea. They would have a second to get out of this building and ride one of the animals to the surface, where there had to be some ships that survived. The battle station was not strong enough yet to destroy everything. And so, the two of them broke a window in the building, and Obi-Wan was able to call upon an Awa to ride. Kenobi and Skywalker rode to the surface of the water, and once they emerged, they saw the destruction. Kamino was destroyed, but not completely. Some structures had simply been severely damaged, rather than toppled into the water. And after a bit of searching, two clone fighter ships were found. Kenobi and Skywalker boarded them, taking off for the unsuspecting space station. Anakin felt into the force for Ahsoka, but she was gone. She had died in the explosions, and Dooku would pay. Count Dooku was marveling at the success of this battle station. In many years, he would have been one capable of blowing up a planet, but this station was very scarcely populated and could only do this much damage as of now. But it was enough. It would need a bit more time before it was ready to jump into hyperspace again, but Dooku had won this day. Kenobi and Ventress had died, but so had Skywalker, his Padawan, and the cloning facilities. The Republic would have no choice but to give up now. And while distracted by this, Dooku was informed of two clone fighters landing in the hangar bay of the space station. Fear overcame Dooku. No clone could have survived. No, this was a Jedi, Anakin, and either Anakin's Padawan, or worse, Dooku's Padawan. Dooku didn't have too much time to consider who it could be as Kenobi and Skywalker entered the room and without saying a word, the Jedi ignited their sabers and charged Dooku with intent to kill. Dooku shot a blast of lightning at Anakin, who caught it, throwing it back at Dooku. He had just enough time to deflect this blast with his saber and engage the two. Dooku fought back against the relentless assault of Kenobi and Skywalker, reluctantly realizing that this duo was inevitable. The Chosen One was ripping the dark side out of Kenobi, and now looking to eradicate Dooku once and for all. Anakin's blue saber clashed fiercely against Dooku's blade, the energy crackling, sizzling, as they parried and thrust each other with lightning speed. Obi-Wan moved with precision, his own lightsaber whirling in a mesmerizing display. Dooku had betrayed him, 
and he would get his revenge. But Dooku's cunning experience was formidable. The two Jedi fought with unwavering determination yet. They pressed the relentless assault, forcing Dooku to retreat step by step, sweat trickling down their brows as they exerted every ounce of their strength, knowing the fate of the galaxy was in the balance. Sensing an opportunity, Dooku was able to swiftly disarm Obi-Wan, cutting his saber in half, spinning across the floor. Obi-Wan found himself defenseless though, his eyes locked with Anakin's in a determined way. He was unfazed by the setback. Obi-Wan used the force to push Dooku back now, buying a moment for himself. As Obi-Wan frantically searched for a weapon, his gaze fell upon a ledge overlooking a seamless, bottomless chasm. An idea flashed in his mind, a moment that would allow Anakin to strike down Dooku, bring an end to this duel. With a resolute determination, Obi-Wan made his move. He sprinted towards Dooku, a blinding blur, and just as Dooku turned to face him, Obi-Wan launched himself in the air, somersaulting over the Sith Lord. In one fluid motion, Obi-Wan reached out with the Force, grabbing onto Dooku, using his momentum to hurl them both towards the edge of this precipice. Now on the edge, Obi-Wan quick kicked Dooku in the knee, trying to send him over the edge. Instead, Dooku grabbed Obi-Wan quickly and stabbed him. Obi-Wan grunted in pain, but this wasn't over. As Dooku tried to pull his saber away and get away from the ledge, Obi-Wan held it in place through his abdomen. Dooku struggled to dislodge his sabers. He and Obi-Wan watched as Anakin landed a fatal blow on Dooku, cutting him in half. Dooku tumbled down the large hole in the battle station, and Anakin held his former master. Obi-Wan began instructing Anakin on exactly how to shut down the droid army, as well as where the Separatist leaders were being kept. With Dooku gone, and Obi-Wan being betrayed, he was giving Anakin everything needed to win the war. Obi-Wan was slowly fading now, dying in this moment. Anakin agreed to do whatever necessary, and he locked eyes with Obi-Wan. And as Obi-Wan died, he said, I'm sorry, Anakin. The Republic would go on to shut down the droid army, defeat Grievous, and arrest the Separatist leadership. Under newly elected Senator Organa, Senators of the Republic would all be investigated. Peace would be restored. Thanks to Obi-Wan's dying moments, the Republic would forever be flawed, but it remained. And that's where our story's gonna end. Yeah, I don't, I usually don't, spend too much time on the cleanup after the main story ends it just kind of ends with obi-wan and dooku dying here and the republic winning i know it kind of happens a lot in the fan fictions but this is the way i wanted it to go i don't believe obi-wan can ever go truly full dark side so i wanted him to do this make a sacrifice let me know what you think and let me know what other fan fictions you want to see thank you for watching i truly hope you enjoyed please leave a like and i'll see you in the next video